PR director for Come and Take It Texas. And uh, director, I hate that. PR director for Do, Do Not Comply.com and the organization behind the open carry movement here in Texas. And uh, the Alamo and just doing incredible things. So give it up for uh, Matthew Short here. Hey everybody, how's it going today? Sorry if you talk to me and I'm a little stinky and look out of place. I've been traveling with my son and we've been camping out with everything we could carry on us and learning some survival. Yeah. So definitely when you, when you hear today people talking about teaching the ones younger than us, please go out there and do that. There is a knowledge that all of you can pass on to the younger generation because this is our future. Absolutely. So my mom used to always tell me, your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks more than your talk talks. And I want to talk today about, uh, about freedom and a few things that has gone on here in the last couple of years. First off, I'm going to read a couple of words and their definitions to get my point across. Fear. To be afraid of something or someone, to expect or worry about something bad or unpleasant, to be afraid of. Security. The state of being protected. There we go. Enslavement. Submission to a, to a, to a, to a factor or a state of a person. Coercion. Or constraint in the, cho in the choice of action. Liberation from slavery and restraint from the power of another. Unresisted. A couple of years ago, when C.J. Grisham was taking a hike with his son, Officer Ernest from the Temple Police Department came and arrested him. And it became big news because right after that, come and take it, Texas put on an event where we went to Temple. And we took 500 men, women, and children armed with AK-47s and AR-15s. We marched around the Temple Police Department and told them that here in Texas, our guns and our Second Amendment was going to mean something. It wasn't too long after that we had people arrested at the Alamo. We ended up going down to the Alamo with 1,500 strong armed men and women, AK-47s and AR-15s, mm -hmm. to demand that our Second Amendment wasn't going to be challenged here in Texas. Over the last couple of years, some of these groups have split off and they've formed other, other gun groups. But what has really changed the law here is we have had Thousands and thousands of people. I'm getting a lot of feedback here. Test, test, test. Sorry if I was kind of trying to catch up with my words because I was here in the ring probably before you all were. So right after the temple event, I went down there and I'd been a YouTuber and a tenured activist uh, before this event. And I wanted to see who all these people with guns were that were showing up to surround the police department. I've had a YouTube channel for a long time and I've talked about patriotism and what it, what it means to be an American and to get past fear because fear is hindering us in so many ways from doing the things that we should be doing. Murdoch Pizgati, the president of Come and Take It Texas and DumpApply.com asked me to then join them to help film, to basically tell their story. I ended up becoming their PR director because I I saw what was going on, and it was the largest grassroots movement since the 1950s or 60s, right here in Texas. We're literally in every town across this state, we had people marching with rifles in their hands. They weren't doing it in, for any other reason but for freedom and defiance of those who on a national level have been talking about taking our guns from us. Shortly after we learned that Bloomberg and Moms Demand Action had a $10 million purse against us to propagandize the American people and to use statements and to use our own actions to try and fear the public away from supporting the Second Amendment and actually legislating your right to be licensed or registering 
uh, you under gun, gun registration, which eventually most of us know ends up taking our firearms away from us. But since then, I've had the pleasure of walking with these guys and helping every single law enforcement agency in this state and this country understand what we really know about guns in this country. It is freedom. It backs up everything that we do. It gives us the right to speak and to be protected when we speak. Mm -hmm. Started following these guys around and putting out messages to other activists that I know across the country. And I started seeing that every time we went out to one of these rallies, the police weren't coming out and pepper spraying people anymore. <laughs> they weren't coming out with riot shields and with sticks to hit us anymore. We started getting a chance to stand face to face with them and actually have a conversation because now we were on the same level. I'll tell you that none of the things that we have done have been to go out there and start a war with the police. Our intentions the whole time have been to inform the public and to inform the police of our rights. Because it seems like so many of us, or so many people have watched programming on TV and almost had that convinced away from them that it's bad, that everybody on TV that's a gun owner, that is militia or patriots, well, they're the ones that all the cop shows are looking for these days, right? <laughs> A couple years ago, we found out the BLM was trying to take land from ranchers up on the Red River. So we coordinated with Oath Keepers and with the other gun rights groups, and we ended up making a stand at Red River. The BLM never showed up. We invited them, we called their office, we asked them to speak on stage with us. We ended up taking 160 Texas flags and lining the Red River with us, just so they know where Texas actually started at. Since then, our governor and other people have come out in support of that message, whether or not they've stood behind us, they've supported the message that Texas is gonna remain Texas. And we're gonna retain our gun rights here. They tried to pull a fast one on us in this, legislation, this legislative session this last year and sell our rights back to us. They said that you can only now carry a pistol in the open if you go and you pay a tax stamp you get a background check and you go through a class and say that you're okay to actually carry your inalienable rights with you. That word is very important. Founding fathers use inalienable in a very important way because it is a right you're not supposed to put a lien upon. You cannot put a lien upon. Yet so many people have been allowing their rights to be leaned upon even with a carry tax. I want to tell you right now, we're not done with a lot of the things that we've been doing. We're still going to be fighting for that. And come this next legislative session, we are going after constitutional carry right here in Texas. So Stuart Rhodes and some of these guys today have been talking about forming your groups in your local area. I am a product of us forming local groups within our areas. We did this within the open carry movement. Mm -hmm. Every single law enforcement agency in this land have had to go back to class and learn what the Second Amendment is. They had to learn that somebody carrying a gun is not a criminal. And the more that they try and restrict our rights, they're making good men and women criminals in our society. We've now come to a place, actually, where we have law enforcement approach us and shake our hands and thank us because there are some good ones out there who do want freedom and liberty for our people. Some of our actions have caught the press, caught the international press and the attention of our national press. We've been putting everything from Rolling Stone magazine to uh, the New York Times, LA Times, Chicago. A lot of these other parts of the country have been selling these ideas of, as what we've been doing in, in Texas and making stands against the BLM as being terrorism. But it's not, it's the way that Americans have acted for a long time. It's why we have such a national sense of pride in our strength is because that is the history of America, standing up for our people and standing up for our land. 
just going to tell you real quickly about a couple of our events that we've done. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get off stage and, and let somebody else catch up with the time. The last three events that we did, one of them was at the Katy Trail in Dallas, Texas. The police came out and said that they didn't want people to carry guns on the trail in Dallas, Texas anymore. Two days later, an ex aggie football player took a machete down and hacked a jogger to death because he was frustrated with life. A couple weeks after that, it, the, the jogger's wife killed herself. And then there started a, a rash of rapings and muggings on the trail. So we decided we were going to go dress up in our craziest 80s and 70s jogging outfits we could make and go down. And when the police and the national press showed up, we told them that we were just exercising our rights. <laughs> but we were also making a demand of the public that this is Texas, carry your guns with you. And Stuart Rhodes was talking earlier about how you can be the first responder just by being somebody who is using your inalienable rights to bear your arms. You're the first ones there. Not too long after that, we found out that Dallas was not allowing people to feed the homeless. There's a lot of churches that go down underneath the bridges where they have a tent city. A lot of these people are veterans. A lot of these people have already been kicked out by programs. Maybe their cancer is too bad and nobody wants to spend the money on them. And as much as I hear politics talking about socialism, talking about taking care of the, the public and having health care. If you want to see what that really does to people, go underneath the 45 bridge in Dallas, Texas and see the hundreds of people that are suffering down there. The VA that's turned away people who are dying, their cancer's too much, so they're just not going to do anything for them anymore. Once a year we go down and we take monetary donations that we have and we get as much hats, gloves, socks, camping supplies as we can, we prepare those people for the winter. And this last time when the detectives and the code enforcement showed up to tell us not to, we stood there with them with AK-47s, AR-15s, and pistols, and we told them we're not going to comply. We closed over 500 people. We gave them sleeping bags and the tents they needed to stay warm for the winter. And we fed just as many and sent them on their way with as much food as they could carry. And it saddens me that I can't do that every weekend. These, these groups that Stuart and them are trying to teach you all how to put together are that important that when veterans are being thrown to the trash, that you have the ability to call up your local crews and say that we can go out here and we can take care of it. Being a PR director for don'tcomply.com, a lot of people ask me what it is that we do most of the time, and it's we don't comply. If it's a bad law, if it's something that they're telling you to do and it's not morally correct, why are you following that here in America? Or why are you following it here in Texas? What is a Minuteman and what is a 3%? Minuteman traditionally was ready to go in a minute's time. During the revolution, they were set out so that when they had information to get out, they would take that information to the next town, to the militia, as quickly as they could. And that's what we've been doing at Don't Comply. We are Minutemen, and we are three percenters that go out and walk it all the time. We'd love for you guys to join us anytime you go out or start doing these own activities in your own area. We're really sick of seeing false flag type scenarios. We're sick of hearing these words that the media give us like <sighs> mass shootings, um, crisis actors, free speech zones. All of these things, they rile me up inside because I was told that I lived in the land of the free when I was growing up. Yet with 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prisoners, doesn't really seem like we're living in the land of the free, does it? The more that they restrict us from places that we can carry, the more that they're actually securing us and using our fear to enslave us. But if you notice that the word freedom was the exact opposite of those other three words that I used. 
Freedom is not having the fear or need for security and understanding that that security and that fear is what enslaves us. A couple months ago, we called up the press and we told them that we were gonna perform a fake mass shooting down at UT. And that story went crazy viral. <laughs> Before we knew it, our phones were blowing up and we couldn't even keep up with all the press that was calling us. They ended up having to do Good Morning America, Fox News, The Today Show, all of these things within a week until it got to a point where my voice was pretty much gone. The mainstream media had to have spent millions getting there and I don't care that some of them watch my Facebook live feed and I'm gonna tell you guys right now, we know you spent millions of dollars to come and, come and uh, cover that story. They went to where the free speech zone was. <laughs> they went to where everybody always goes to, to film stuff at UT. And we had told them that that was an area we were gonna be in and we want you to be in our free speech zone. This is where you'll get to talk for us. So we showed up and we realized that if we had all this press there and then we had a whole bunch of people that were coming to counter protest us, they were shaking um, rubber toys and fart machines. And I'll let you understand what rubber toys are. <clears throat> My son's in the, in the audience here. <laughs> we realized that if we if we were going to bring that much attention to it, that we had been carrying, I was carrying AK-47 with a hundred round drum on it. And the last thing I wanted to do was put it in my car where people was gonna know where it was at. They could bust my windows out and everything else. We, we had a real problem with security that day. So we had devised beforehand that we had to get our point across. The gun-free zones are killing people. These places where our schools are, these places where um, different federal institutions are, those are target-rich environments for criminals and crazies that want to hurt people. So we lost the entire international media, and we lost an entire metropolitan police force, Boston Police Department. While right under their noses, we basically left them when we were in a room the size of this, or on the street with this many people around. We got off and we started our fake mass shooting with cardboard guns and ketchup. We proved on video that it takes 15 minutes for the police to show up. We literally ran through what we were going to do four times before the first ones even showed up. Meaning that we, we fake killed 20 people before the first cops showed up. And when the first cops showed up, they had told us we weren't allowed to be on UT that day. It was all over the news. We weren't supposed to be on UT, but where we ended up pulling it off was between the church, UT campus, and the dormitories. We were in three gun-free zones at one time. And the first cops that showed up, they showed up, they got out of their car, and instead of kicking us off, they went like this. They knew that we had just proved our point. UT that week came out and said they were gonna allow the guns and concealed carry with licenses in their classrooms and their common areas, and we defeated another gun-free zone in a place where tyranny is taking over and trying to secure and enslave part of our people. These groups that they're teaching you all how to put together today, follow what they're saying. Get with your groups. You're gonna find out you have a lot more in common with these people around you. You're gonna get a lot more done. And as somebody who's made some major, major press, major news, We've overchanged a 140-year-old Jim Crow law here in Texas. They want to call me racist. They took away your gun rights because the slaves were let go after the Civil War and coming home, and they didn't want them to carry coming home. So they took everybody's rights away to secure the public or to enslave them. We overchanged that this last year. We got license open carry, and like I said, next year we're fighting for constitutional carry. Get behind these groups, guys, support them, and form your own groups and support them. The more groups, the merrier. The more people that are learning about liberty and freedom, the better we are. It's like Jordan Page says in his song, uh, Liberty. What is the question and freedom's the answer, right? We have a long way to go to get out of this hole 
of complacency that the American people have fallen into over the last couple of decades. And we're really looking at a time and period where we can all watch it fall away. Let's not let that happen. Stand up and be walkers and not just talkers. Thank you. We had the privilege to work with Matthew on quite a few events. Uh, the first open carry march in Temple, Oath Keepers was one of the sponsors of that march. And Matthew is also with us when we did our little uh, operation at the Republican National Convention in 2012. I think you're even interviewing me on a, a video. I was looking at that the other day like, oh, it's Matthew Short. I'm so, everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah. So when this next legislative session comes around, if you want to get involved in something that matters downtown Austin, Everybody get with this guy. If we have five people inside every uh, legislator's office, then our chances of success of recovering all of our gun rights get that much better.